Hi, my name is Daniel Blackburn, and today we're going to talk about the introduction to the CURS Waste Management for Soil Applications, SWAE 3111. We're going to place the organic waste recycling and use for agriculture in the context of circular economy and the optimization of the use of natural resources in society. Okay, so before I start, just want to re-emphasize that the preferred way of communication with the students in this course is through the Moodle. So if you have questions, post it on the Moodle site and not send it through email or WhatsApp. Starting with the lecture, we're gonna uh, let's think about first about how the society works and uh, how little awareness there is about how much waste we generate when we consume everything that we consume on a day-to-day -day basis. The drivers of consumption are not based on necessity anymore. They're based on desire and how we are sold this desire for the specific products. So there's a lot of over-packaging, over-consuming, and we, we want to change things and have new things and shiny things and better looking things and that is not really related to what we really need. And secondly, what the planet, the natural resources from the planet uh, can provide. So what is happening here is there is an unseen effect that everything we consume, it's uh, associated with the use of uh, the planet's natural resources. And these natural resources, some of them are finite. They will finish in some day. And all this waste we generate in this process is a problem for the environment. So we have to change the way in which we uh, design these economies based on the thinking of the life cycle of each one of these materials in order to optimize this. And also in this process, we need to think about all these hidden ways that we don't have really to think about often how we do reuse them and recycle them back into the economy. The big, the big background problem is the, the human population. Ever increasing human population exerts a very high pressure on the natural, natural resources. We are uh, over 7 uh, billion people in the planet now, and this is, will only increase on the future. They're standing for stabilization, but actually is very hard to project. Uh, the, the ever-growing population in the planet uh, is producing more and more uh, uh, waste uh, and this disposal of this waste becomes a, a huge uh, problem for uh, societies and the environment. How the economy normally works is there is very little treatment and reuse of the waste that is produced. Most of this waste is dumped on landfills mixed together and these landfills becomes a, a, a big source of uh, greenhouse gas emissions and also uh, a waste of the, the resources that we could be reusing and reinserted in society. There's, a, there's another thing that is happening that all this waste that is being generated, uh, many countries, they do not want to dispose them internally and they're exporting this waste, paying for, the, for other countries to receive this waste and the, most of the recycling in the, in the world is happening in, by outsourcing this waste for uh, other countries. And outsourcing the environmental problem that this waste generates in other countries also. So this, this has been, there has been a, a huge amount of discussion about this. And uh, recently when there was this trade war between uh, USA and China, and China stopped importing some waste from uh, USA, it becomes very evident that the, the developed countries cannot deal with the amount of waste they are generating. There is very little, little conscience in the populations in awareness at the governmental levels of this problem. So of, of course, this is another just map showing this uh, 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 
waste war and the export of waste between uh, the countries. Of course, the, the lines here design are the known routes of waste export, but there are also illegal export of waste happening. So the, the developing countries, and in, especially in Asia and Africa, they're receiving a lot of waste and using this waste for the manufacture of new materials, and even just using them for dumping and, and re, uh, being paid for receiving this uh, waste and uh, reusing it. There's actually very little regulation and laws regarding this uh, waste trade across the world. This waste trade is very um, inefficient because all this transport means that you're spending more energy and spending uh, more of the, the uh, society's resources in the process of disposing this waste. But of disposal of the waste is the last thing that we want to do. What we want to do is reuse and recycle. Yeah? So what are the big questions that we have to ask? We have to ask what are the, the economic activities and the resources that we are using? Is it a renewable resource? If it's renewable, it means that it will have, you will have more and more, like, for example, uh, biomass or wind energy, for example. But there is another question is, is it sustainable? When you talk about sustainability, you are thinking about the time component here. And if it's this, some things are renewable, but are not very sustainable, it means that if you overconsume them or overuse, this will be completely uh, exhausted. So sustainability is a concept that you include the time effect on this. And the next question that we have to always ask in our economic activities are, how does it affect the environment? Big hot topic now, it's about greenhouse gas emissions and climate change. And that is always being uh, discussed in the context of the, the energy, energy generation. But there is a, many other components of society that are involved with climate change, uh, including, for example, change of uh, uh, land use. For example, it's a big component of emission of greenhouse gases. And uh, many of the waste we generate in the, 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 the activities we have in society has a huge impact in wildlife through the deterioration of the ecosystems and the change of these natural habitats into agricultural lands or occupied lands with uh, 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 cities. This, this, this causes a, a huge impact in the deterioration of the biodiversity of the planet and the decrease of the biodiversity of the natural uh, wildlife. Of course, we are uh, completely dependent on this wildlife and the biodiversity of the planet for our survival. And we need to consider that every living species on the planet has the same right to uh, occupy the, the, these this natural resources that we have. The other thing we have to consider is how these activities that we perform, they, how they affect public health, yeah? public health. For example, causing diseases if you have inadequate uh, um, disposal of wastes. <clears throat> so the idea here is that we have to uh, strive for a green economy. This has been uh, over and overcome in the new. We need a green recovery from COVID. We need a green economy. We need a green new deal. The green economy uh, subject is all over the news. But what, what is it about? There is, of course, everybody's thinking about energy, you know, low carbon uh, uh, footprint societies. But this is not only about energy. This uh, is this mostly and more importantly about how do we use and how do we consider the use of the natural resources from the world and how the optimization of the, the use of these natural resources is integrated into the economic activities. And this, of course, needs to be in overlap to the, the environmental, the, 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 the society's conscious towards environmental uh, factors. So we have the overlap of this these three areas, we, we have the economic factor, we cannot do any economic activity if it's not profitable, 
uh, we cannot we have to think about the environmental impact of these activities and of course we need to have that this is socially accepted uh, act, uh, uh, activities that we are performing and then in the intercept of the social the environmental and economic aspect that is where the concept of sustainability is coming so let's talk about the, the circular economy concept now. How the society works now is just that we are tackling the natural resource, just using the natural resource, making a lot of stuff, consuming a lot of stuff, and disposing this. And this, of course, this is not sustainable. This is not something that uh, is considering the, the these natural resources are finite and they will end at some point. The, the, what we really need is a circular economy. And I think you should uh, think about natural ecosystems as a, a, a parallel for this concept. For example, a forest is taking up nutrients from the soil, the leaves are coming back to the soil, decomposing, the nutrients are returning to the soil, the trees are taking these uh, nutrients up again, and there's a, there's a cycle happening, and there's a cycle happening. And the energy inputs that you have on this ecosystem there are renewable energy inputs coming from, from the sunlight, for example. What we need to design our societies is mimicking these natural ecosystems, yeah? because we need to think that if we only have the linear uh, economy happening, at some point we will end up in trouble because we, are, uh, we overuse our natural resources and we, we accumulate too, many, too much waste and uh, have a lot of environmental impact of these wastes. So what we need is from the biological materials, use these biological materials to enrich the production systems to make more biological materials and then have a cycle. And the technical materials we also need to recycle and reuse these materials in order to have them returning to, uh, uh, as input back into the economy. So the, the uh, circular economy concept is also heavily associated with uh, designing, minimizing the generation of waste, uh, creating a lot of diversity in activities. To, uh, uh, through the diversity, we create resilience. Uh, there's, uh, uh, the energy inputs should be uh, uh, renewable energy sources. We have to think about the, the systems as a whole, not individual ports, not what is convenient for one specific sector, but what is convenient for the whole society at the end. And the pricing should be including the environmental externalities that any activity has. So if it not only be based on offer and demand, sometimes it's very easy to produce and very cheap to produce, but the wastes generated have a huge environmental impact and the consumers and the producers are not uh, uh, including the externalities of uh, the impact on the environment uh, on the systems and also not including the externalities of the, 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 the recycling and the limit, limited availability of the natural resources that are being used on the economic activity. This circular economy uh, concept of the optimization of, of the use of natural resources and their recycle throughout the economic activities, they are not exclusive for the concept of circular economy. There are many other uh, uh, areas and, and concepts and movements that are including the similar concepts. Some of them are listed here, for example, biomimicry, imitating nature, new economy, cradle to cradle, industrial ecology, uh, resource recovery, systems thinking, the bio biosphere rules, and resource-based economy. These are some of them. I'm not going to read them for you, but these are some of the examples of other uh, movements or concepts that are including similar um, theoretical backgrounds. So what, what we actually need is to improve, reuse, and recycle in society. And uh, that is uh, in order to save energy, conserve resources, reduce pollution, cut waste disposal, and uh, save our valuable materials, uh, source materials, and reduce the amount of landfills that we have.
This is data from the OCDE of about municipal waste recycling. And of course, there's not enough data from the many parts of the world in this graphic. And uh, because it's OCDE data, and from the OCDE, you have that Australia and Germany and North Europe are the main recyclers. But of course, Asia uh, is not included here, and the majority of the volume of the recycling is now being happening in Asia. And here is a, a, a table showing uh, uh, some of this data up to 2017, where you have uh, uh, increasing uh, percentage of recycling rate being done in Asian countries. There's no official statistics for China, but uh, it, China is also one of the big countries on recycling these days. Not only on recycling, but all the green technologies and, and uh, uh, renewable uh, sources of um, material and energies. So when we use when we talk about reduce, reuse, and recycle, actually we are talking about uh, waste hierarchy. So we're talking about what is the the most favored option for the outcome of this waste, and what is the least favored option. The most favored option is preventing the generation of waste. Yeah, completely through the minimization and reuse of this uh, um, material. So this prevention and minimization, this is uh, 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 this is what the, the components of the reduce. Yeah, you know, we need to think about: before, can we stop generating this this waste? Can we minimize the generation of this waste before it's uh, even done? Sometimes we. Uh, uh, let's say, do we really need to have five layers of packaging in a Big Mac from the McDonald's? Maybe one or two is enough so we can minimize and uh, prevent the generation of this waste. The reuse of the material is very important. For example, now in Oman, uh, the new law of you cannot have um, plastic bags on the supermarket, so we have reusable bags that everybody's carrying around now. This is a huge improvement for reducing the waste generation. Recycling, it's down on the line of the preferred options. Energy recovered, recovery, if you burn out this and generate energy with that, this is good, but not as good as the other options on the top of the pyramid. And the last option should be the disposal of these materials in landfills. So there is, the, the higher you go in this pyramid, the, is the best option for, for waste management, and the lower you go is the worst option. And of course, there's, there are details on this and the reduction. Um, we are talking about the needs, the alternatives, the availabilities of, uh, of material. We are talking about different levels of uh, personal level, household, community levels, business. Uh, there, there are things that can be shared. For example, uh, uh, men, uh, do we need to have this many cars in society or this uh, public transport can be used and uh, shared cars can be used? or many other areas, there's uh, ways of tackling the use of natural resource and reducing this uh, waste on the complete line, you know, from re uh, redu reduction, reuse, and recycling. Yeah? So how it is that society is working now, almost all the waste is going for disposal, there's a, a, a little bit of recover, little recycle, little reuse, and little reduction. But what we really need is to invert this pyramid and increase the, 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 the top of the pyramid and decrease the base of that pyramid. And this can be thought of from different areas of society. For example, in the industry, you have to place more emphasis on process efficiency. Uh, uh, include more recycling design into the processes. Uh, we, we have to create laws for better functional processes, and we have to uh, resolve conflict of use of mineral resources. In the recycler uh, uh, sphere, we have to increase the number of recycling units. We have to increase the profitability of this economic activity. And uh, we have to re uh, rethink the scale of the, the logistics in this uh, level. And then the consumer level also, we need to more conscious cons consumption 
uh, we can do recycling at, at our home scale. We, uh, and we have also to uh, create more conscious overall in order to generate less waste in the society. How do we do that? We need to, everybody to keep this awareness of that everything you use, they, they come from a raw material and there is a, a whole process of manufacturing, transport, and if we include a re reuse and recycling this before disposal, it will, it will create an optimization of this cycle. So thinking about the life cycle of systems is very important for uh, recycle of organic waste. And if we talk about agriculture, there's one big area that we need to mention here is that some of the fertilizers that we use, like nitrogen fertilizers, these are dependent on energy because they are fixed from the atmosphere. For example, nitrogen is fixed from the atmosphere or dependent on energy. But other fertilizers, they're based on the utilization of natural resources, finite natural resources that will end soon enough. So phosphorus, for example, the phosphate rocks that are used for making phosphorus fertilizers, these are projected to end in uh, over 300 years. It seems like a long time, but we expect to be here for much longer, thousands of years more, so indefinitely. So we need to think about how we optimize the use of these phosphate rock reserves. So phosphate rocks are used to make phosphate uh, rock fertilizer. And this fertilizer is being used throughout the, 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 the economical activities in agricultural lands. Much of this phosphorus is being lost to waters through erosion, but much of this also is being exported to landfills. So what do we do about this problem of a finite natural resource, like a phosphate rock? And we have to look at these arrows where we have the biggest losses on the system and we have to optimize them. And this includes that the organic waste they're generating containing phosphorus should be recycled and reused back in the agriculture. And this is the only way in we, we can tackle the fact that we have limited uh, rock phosphate. We have to make this phosphorus not leave the system, re, uh, come back and feed back the system indefinitely so we can have continuously a sustainability in this agriculture sector. And what we are doing with this, actually, we are adding most of our organic waste into the landfill. We are not using it back into agriculture. This is data from EPA USA uh, from 2009. The majority uh, of the waste, if you include paper and uh, uh, organic waste from the from the the paper as organic waste, most of the waste is generated by the households or organic, yeah? So 46% is organic, but also there is 17% paper, and paper can be considered you know, an organic material also. And this uh, other here can, can include even uh, very toxic stuff like electronic waste, for example. But from this organic waste, the, the most of this is discarded in landfills. There is very little, 24% of recycling, uh, and this 9% uh, in uh, composting, and some of it is used for um, uh, energy recovery through combustion. This is from all the waste, not only from organic, yeah? from all the waste. What we need to do is increase these two areas here, or this side of the, 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 the recovery and recycling of this waste. So what we need to think about as, as a general scope is this organic waste that we generate in high amount, more than half of all the waste we generate is organic. This is a big issue for the environment, but at the same time, it's a, a, an opportunity. This is an opportunity for society because it's a natural resource, a valuable natural resource with economic value and environmental value. And if we just um, uh, adjust our economic activities enough that we can reuse and recycle these organic waste into the, the agricultural fields, 
this re will represent a big uh, a big cash opportunity for societies but uh, also uh, a big gain for the management for, of our natural resources this Organic waste are very helpful for soil environments because uh, if we only use chemical fertilizers, we are actually killing the soil. Killing the soil in the sense that we are feeding the plants, but we are not feeding the soil. The, the soil uh, is a living being and all the microbes and organisms in the soil, they are hugely important for creating the environment in the soil that helps the plant grow. So the structure of the soil, for example, is heavily conditioned by the biological activities on the soil. And if we do not add organic matter in the process of uh, uh, agriculture, we are actually uh, decreasing the health of the soil and the quality of these soils. So the recycling of this organic waste back into, into the soil environment is very important for keeping the soils healthy and could, uh, uh, keeping the environment uh, for uh, agriculture sustainable on the long term. Basic idea, raw materials, waste being recycled and used uh, uh, back into agriculture for increasing the sustainability of these systems. All right, that's all I have to bring for you today. Thank you very much for uh, attending this lecture and I hope you enjoyed and you see, I see you in the next one. Thank you.